So this is the back end when you log into to Keyword Spy. We just recently uh, had a contest and Amos Struck was the winner, which is just something we, we check on a regular basis, uh, the stats of who's ranking where in Keyword Spy and how well people are doing. And uh, these are just some of our examples of wins. Uh, in fact, I could show you uh, a more, a bigger list of wins. So um, this guy went uh, four to two spots for a high-end food, food blog niche, another uh, from four to two for a food niche, uh, two spots for a printing niche, two spots for a vehicle niche, three spots for e-commerce niche, a gaming niche, a non-English niche. So we do non-English niches as well. Uh, a boost of five spots from 14 to nine for a gaming niche. In just one month, up six spots to number three for a non-English niche. Uh, one month, up six spots. Uh, one month, up two spots. One month, a boost four spots from... Uh, uh, no, sorry, a boost of eight spots up to number four for an online education niche. So we're getting a lot of people who are going off of page one to page one. A uh, boost of uh, four spots for a gaming niche. Six, uh, 13 spot boost for a coupon niche from off page one to page one. Uh, a boost of 20 spots for an insurance assurance niche from off page one to page one, which is fantastic. A, a boost of 15 spots for e-commerce niche. A uh, boost all the way to number two. Up 15 spots from off the SERP to number two, just from using Keyword Spy. Uh, a boost of 25 plus spots for a cybersecurity niche. A boost of 23 spots for an escort niche. That one still has a lot further to go. It's still quite quite deep in the SERP there. And it's interesting that, you know, we can do adult niches, but they're, they're can be very tough to rank in, quite frankly. It's not really about the on-page. It's more about uh, the links and recommendations there, quite frankly. A boost of 35 spots in the health niche. And finally, a boost of 76 spots was the biggest boost from 100 to 24, I believe. Uh, in an e-commerce niche, and that was Amos's win there. So congratulations, Amos. I just want to quickly show you those wins there. Anyhow, uh, so how do we handle the TW BERT term weighting in uh, Keyword Spy? Well, we test for it. So first off, you can get a sense in, in the BERT tab here of the different kinds of, of entities that are important, the different kind of phrases that are important. So apply for installment loans in Canada, get information on installment loans available in Canada. If I just do installment loans Canada here, what do we get? If I just do installment loans Canada, we get installment loans and Canada, yep. So again, yes, those are the most important words, but shouldn't something be added here? We have the additions here for loan interest rates, loan terms and conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we also show you the top 20 competitors, uh, BERT phrases. Installment loans in Canada, loans for bad credit, uh, installment loans Canada, installment loans in, installment loans. So you can see the huge precipitous drop off between the, uh, the, the usage of 160 to 55. That really shows you that installment loans really is the most important query there. That, that the term weighting there is really important. This shows you the term weighting here. Uh, installment loans Canada is not that much higher than this. Installment loans in Canada is much higher than bad credit. So it really is, it's installment loans in Canada really is the more important ones, even though we give you a bunch of other ideas. The other thing you can do here is you could do, well, this really is the query intent here. So apply for installment loans in Canada and get information on installment loans available in Canada is really where we make sure we have the, the term weighting and we're finding what the actual query intent is there for your article. Let me show you a different one here. Let me show you a different one here. Maybe this one would be better. So the for, so for this one, which was outdoor wall lighting, we have explore the different types of outdoor wall lighting fixtures here. That's the important thing, the fixtures, I think, or shop for outdoor wall lights. Uh, outdoor wall and wall lights is really high. Outdoor wall lights is really high and outdoor lighting, outdoor wall lights is really high. And if I do outdoor wall lighting on this one, what do we get? Yeah, we get wall lighting. So outdoor wall lighting, outdoor wall lighting, outdoor lighting. So it's giving us the outdoor lighting and the wall lighting, and it's, it broke those two ideas, those two entities down separately and rated them, which is not too bad, not too bad. But you'll get a much more comprehensive list and a much better list uh, with wall sconces. 
Uh, but really, the lighting fixtures is an important word here, and shopping for the outdoor wall lights is an important word here in terms of what could be done in, in BERT analysis when we rebuild the model for you or uh, what your competitors are using here in terms of their phrases. You could stick with them if you want. You have, you have your choice. The reporting in Keyword Spy is second to none. You really don't need to use it if you don't want to. You could just go right to the editor and build the, build the article. But the reporting in Keyword Spy is second to none. So to answer the question, where would you use these important uh, terms? Well, first off, it's not just, although today I was focusing on uh, TW BERT, that's not the only AI that you need to worry about, of course. There are multiple AIs you need to worry about. There's Rank Brain, there's BERT, uh, two different versions of BERT, uh, these BERT Normal and BERT TW. There's Neural Matching, which is a huge one that most people don't even know about. There's Knowledge Graph. There's DOM vector. Uh, you can see all your competitor information here. Uh, for people who are part of Underground SU University, you also get uh, test pages uh, uh, section here as well. Uh, uh, that, that's only for Underground SU University students as well. Uh, so you can do all your own testing as well. Uh, uh, we are a scientific-based group. And then finally, you get the results. You get all of this aggregated in the results. And the important thing here, the reason why I'm showing you this, is because we have a proprietary scoring system that scores it based on the term weighting that you saw here. And it also we score the phrases uh, based on the term rating. The, but also every other AI that exists gets a score and we all add it up in the end. So the word lights does really well in all the testing. Whereas say the word lantern only did partially well in the BERT testing. It did pretty good in the amalgamated neural matching ramp rating testing but it did not so great in this, the third neural matching testing. And this one favors neural matching. This one favors uh, uh, rank brain is what this one does, those tests. But it's hard, hard to isolate both of them, but we try to. So then you see that it has a lesser score. And so you'll, you'll know whether you should be using these words because you don't just have to please one AI when it comes to doing your ranking. You have to please all of these AIs because all of these different AIs are going to be used like it's not just BERT here, it's BERT and Rank Brain and Neural Matching and Knowledge Graph and Helpful Content and Review Content are all giving different scoring weights to the different terms. And that's all being uh, scoring scored in the function, whatever BM25 is, the, the 25th bowel movement that Google made, so I'm not sure. Uh, uh, and then the, your document gets a score based on all of those AIs, not just one of them. So that's why you need to test for all these different AIs. So you can do that by hand if you want, and we give you all the files here to do it. Uh, if you want to take hours and hours to hours to test it by hand, or Keyword Spy does it for you in about an hour, which, which would take like 10 hours to do all this testing. And so anyway, the important thing is, is that you need to please all of them. So we use a, a aggregate scoring system, just like Google does. Google does an aggregate scoring system here with all the different AIs and scoring them and then giving you the rankings. We do that, we rank your words as well, closer to how Google would rank them. And so that's how you get this aggregate score. And so anyway, the question is, where would you use these terms after not just we test them for one AI, but for all the AIs, all the on-page AIs, where would you use these terms? Okay, well, let me show you. This is where you would use these terms. So let's see if I have a document here. I don't even know if I have a document for this particular one. So. Uh, you learn this much better if you join Underground University, but the quick and dirty version is this. So all of your keywords here are listed. You check the work. Uh, oops, I don't want words here. And I want to sort by score. And it shows you how many times you're using the EMQ, that phrase, and how many times you're using all these different uh, words, which are weighted, that have the highest weight. And it'll give you a red thing when you're missing some. So you know that you want to add those ones probably somewhere in there. Uh, assuming they make sense, HTML doesn't make any sense at all. It only has a score of one because uh, uh, somebody said it somewhere in the document, but, but that's fine. Uh, so you want to make sure you're watching for these red. Uh, 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 you want to get the spread. Watch the red to get the spread, but you also want uh, depth, but I'll talk about that in a second. All those scored words, which would include the TW Burt scored words, you want to be using them in, in the important spots. So the SEO spots here, obviously, are the URL, the title, the description. There's uh, very specific amounts you want to be using that Keyword Spy will follow if you get Keyword Spy to do it for you. So I could say, generate the URL. It'll make it for me. I could say, generate the title. 
It'll do it for me. Installment loans Canada. I get financial freedom with installment loans for Canadians. Perfect. That's the perfect Canadian. That's the perfect uh, query intent. I can generate the meta description. And I can also tell it what kind of angle I want. Uh, installment loans Canada, I think, is in the middle of the sales funnel. So uh, I will say continue. And boom, you get your meta description. So get approved for flexible installment loans Canada with ease. Improve your credit score while enjoying the convenience of online applications. Secure your loan today and experience financial freedom. Uh, and these have all the different keywords in them, uh, including the different keywords that meta description uses, which is not the normal keywords. The other place you'll be using these terms is in the headers. And you need to check your competition to see if it's safe to use what headers. It's safe to use one H1 based on the competition. It usually has about four words and it never has exact match in it. So that makes sure that tells you not to use exact match, only to, uh, it, 22% exact match. It needs to be one or higher, uh, but it uses at least two partial match words. So that's uh, we can, so we know we can use an H1. You can use six H2s, you can use 10 H3s, you can use four H4s, you can use five H1s. They do a big long uh, uh, article. It tells you if you can use the exact match in them, the answer is no. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's safe to use exact match in any of your headings. So there is a thing called over optimization. You've got to be careful there. But it tells you more or less how many partial match words you can put in there. So that is a good reminder. So I'll go back here and remind myself, okay, this should be an H1. So I'll just change it to an H1. Understanding installment loans. And installment loans Canada is the EMQ. So installment loans is perfect. That's exactly two partial match uh, words or in, in the query. Installment and loan. So that's great. And the other place you need to use all of your keywords is in the whole document, in the whole thing, right? Is where you need to use them. And this is where our content score comes in. Our Google semantic score uh, is our own proprietary scoring system that uses your own AI models that we've built for you uh, in the reports. That's why it takes so long because we're building models for you to get you the absolute most precise actual scoring that Google is actually doing here based on the actual AIs they're doing. So it's really important not just to choose an off the shelf uh, 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 keyword tool because they are not building models for you. They are not at all building models for you. They're just faking it. They're just using some off the shelf NLP, which is one kind of AI, which is not any of the AIs Google is using. Google's not using NLP at all, at all. It's not uh, reported by them to being used. And in our testing, we haven't found it to be used at all. Google tells you which ones it uses. I have it uh, somewhere here. Uh, here it is. Here's the actual AIs Google is using. They, they've published it. They're so confident you will not be able to reverse engineer what they're doing because it's so complicated, unless you have AI working for you, like Keyword Spy, that they've gone so far as to publish it. They're using BERT. They're using something called crisis information systems. They usually do duplication, exact match domain system, freshness, helpful content. It's a ranking system. It is a ranking system. It's not just a recommendation. There's an actual AI doing a ranking for this. Link analysis and page rank. Okay, obviously we knew that for the last 23 years. News. They're also using MUM, which is a multitask unified model, which can read uh, podcasts and videos and uh, other kind of files and transfer it to text and vice versa. They're using neural matching. This is a ranking system that scores pages here and gives it a score. Did you know that? Does anybody in any other tool say this? No. They use original content systems. Removal based demotion systems. Passage ranking system is an actual ranking system. Rank brain is an actual ranking system. Reliable information systems that, that, that gives a score, uh, gives a score here. So you need to know what the rank brain keywords are and they're different than the neural magic keywords, which are different than the BERT keywords, for example. They each get a chance to score a document. Review systems, site diversity system, spam detection systems. And these ones are now retired. Panda and Penguin are now retired. And Hummingbird is retired too, because that used to be the way in which they retrieve documents. They don't retrieve documents that way anymore. They're now retrieving documents this way. This is how they're retrieving documents now, and that's not Hummingbird. So we know this, we've been testing this. So if you're not testing for all these things, rank brain, uh, 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 if reliable information systems, which helps uh, surface more authoritative pages and demote low quality content. This is the knowledge graph system that we test for, I believe is what I think it is, rank brain. Passage ranking is also BERT, I believe, because it has a lower token uh, count. Uh, it allows far less tokens. 
than say uh, GPT GPT does in terms of token count, neural matching, and BERT. If you're not testing for all those things, like uh, keyword spy is, for example, you're not going to rank very well. Okay, so finally, where would you put these keywords? You also need to put them in the whole document. And we have the content score that does this. So this big red 85 here is telling you, you need to really decrease the keywords. This is way over optimized. The average for your competitors is 57. That means you need to be at 46 to 56. And we know this for a fact. Okay, we know this for a fact, because we have we have stats in the back end of Keyword Spy and we see where everyone's ranking and we automatically shift this number based on the thresholds that Google gives us. So here's another reason why uh, either being in undergrad at university, which I go into much more detail explaining these uh, automatic systems and or using Keyword Spy is a really good idea because when Google starts penalizing content even more harshly, this automatically adjusts because we automatically see the ranking changes and so we know how to change your content score. So you're never over optimized. All the other systems are just making a guess. They're just guessing. They're not actually going in a responsive system manner. So this document is way over optimized. So the question is, how would I under optimize it? How would I get the numbers down? Also, we know that these numbers here in terms of AI generated content are way too high. The average predictability length is 5.32 tokens. That's 1.12 tokens, 1.22 tokens too high. And the predictability is 79% uh, over the competitors. That is 8% too high. It needs to go down a whole 8% in terms of AI predictability. So how would you get these numbers down? Likely we have the, luckily we have the improve button. You highlight a passage of text and you just press the improve button. Gone are the days when an SEO actually needed to write anything. <laughs> AI is doing it all for you. So you just press the improve button, uh, presto change -o. our AI looks through it and we'll, uh, we'll change it for you and it'll start reducing those numbers. So we say replace and close. Then I will replace or improve this paragraph. While it's doing that, I just want to point out we haven't done a heat score on this. Heat stands for helpfulness, experience, expertise, authority, and trust. Oops. Uh, and we give, we give you an actual score on this, which is going to be a very important ranking score moving forward in the future. When Google finally has an AGI to, to do rankings, the heat score is going to be so important for, for the future. So let me just finish improving this document. So what it's doing, it's rewriting all this, making sense of the sentences, making it better writing than kind of this, your standard uh, kind of SEO drivel. And it, it will end up using less keywords, be less repetitive, which is what you want. So I've changed three paragraphs, the fourth paragraph. And you have to change a fair amount to see a big difference. So I'm going to change a whole bunch. So then I will replace, close. OK, so now that I've replaced a whole bunch of uh, paragraphs, let me redo the content score. And this score should uh, go down quite a bit. Because it improves the writing, it's less repetitive, it's less SEO writing, it's more salesy writing. So it's not going to be uh, as uh, uh, as keyword laden. It should reduce the the, the content score. <clears throat> also, you'll notice it is going to reduce the predictability scores as well, which is what you want. You need to get this number. It's very important to get this number and this number into the variances that we use from the back end by checking to see who's ranking well and how well they're ranking. And we start using a vectorization system to determine, therefore, where your numbers ought to be. So that is very important to make sure that you're within, within those numbers there. HEAT, as I said, stands for helpfulness, experience, expertise, authority, and trust. And that's the, what the score builds there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it just needs sometimes. So now I've gone a little too far. Now I've gone under where I want to be. Now I'm under optimized. It's even what? worse to be under optimized. We found in the in the in the rankings than it is to being over optimized. Uh, although you don't want to be too over optimized. If you're just like if you're like if you're like ten over this number, then that's it's okay. You only get you get an average rank boost of three. If you're one to ten under this number which is why this is the range you want to be in, you get an average ranking boost of 12 points. 
So that in terms you can of improve that. that. You can improve that pretty quickly by using Optimize, which I'm sure you're going to demo. Yeah, I definitely can. So I think I rewrote uh, this. Looks like I rewrote this. So if I click Optimize, uh, oh, this one is oh, no. this one is still uh, uh, broken. So if I clicked Optimize, Optimize is like the opposite of improve. It's going to SEO it up. It's going to add. It's going to increase the average predictabilities, but it's also going to increase the uh, content score as well. So you just want to massage these numbers until they're in the right spot. We're building an article co-pilot that is going to be able to do that for you automatically. This is just our testing server. But when we roll this stuff out to the app, it'll work for perfectly fine. The improve button and the optimize button already work perfectly fine. And the generate article does uh, most of that for you automatically. But anyway, that's the answer to the question where you would use these keywords. You would use them, of course, in the right headers. You would use them in the uh, SEO spots of URL, title, and uh, description. And it's not just about only getting the scoring from one AI correct. It's about getting the scoring from all the AIs correctly. So uh, the reports are here in Keyword Spy. The reports are rock solid and have been for months. You could even just get the results and you can handwrite it if you want. Lots of people handwrite this stuff as well. Mm -hmm.